Greetings! As you may have found out by now, art supplies can range from the super inexpensive to the very expensive. Every once in a while, though, keeping an open mind can lead you to find art supplies in new places. A good, easy example would be these nail art travel brushes. They look a lot like a regular watercolor travel paintbrush, and they are incredibly inexpensive on eBay. I got two sets. One is six flat brushes, and the other is six pointed flat brushes. In all, these 12 brushes cost me 11 Canadian dollars, which I think qualifies as cheap. Are they any good though? This is what we'll find out. Both sets came in the same kind of packaging, just a simple plastic sleeve and plastic tubes to protect the tips. There are six sizes in each of these sets. Uh, number two, a number four, a number six, number eight, number ten, and a number twelve. The tip sizes are consistent in width from one set to the other, but the pointed flats have longer hairs than the flats. The very first thing I did was to wash all of them with gentle soap, since the tips were stiff and the handles had a bit of an oily feel to them. My first impression of these is that the tips look good, but the rest of the brush is a bit hit or miss. All the parts are shoddily put together and some will pop out easily, some are stuck more solidly. The sets are very similar, but there are some important differences. The pointed set has metal covers that don't have holes in the end, which is terrible for travel brushes. When you store a travel brush, it will usually be wet as a way to shape the tip and prevent snagging hairs in a bad way. There is usually a small hole in the end of the cover so that the brush can dry. No holes means moldy brushes, which is unacceptable. Also, the metal cover is not long enough to accommodate the biggest brush, so the hairs get crimped at the tip, and that is also unacceptable. The flat set is a bit better put together, and it was also the less cheap of the two. The metal covers are longer, and these have a hole at the end to let the brushes air out. There are a few minor cosmetic differences too. The flat set has its number 10 printed off the spot, and the number 8 has no print at all. Overall, these brushes have a very basic and plain design. I prepared a sheet of 130 pounds paper to do stroke tests. One side of the sheet has boxes for the six pointed brushes, and the other side has boxes for the six flat brushes. I'm using the Paints Grey Pan from my Van Gogh travel set to test the brushes.
Overall, all the brushes worked well when we only considered the tip. Many of the handles are wobbly and it was annoying to use. I compared one of the brushes to my sad Holbein travel brush and it obviously keeps a better point than the Holbein one. The flat tips are fairly similar to a standard flat paintbrush. After this first try with the brushes, here's what I'm inclined to do. I will put away the metal covers that are too short and have no holes in them. I'll keep the 12 tips and hopefully I can match them with at least one of the remaining 6 covers. I'm not likely to ever use the 12 brushes at once, so I can choose the few I want to bring out and match them with the cover if I head out. To test out these brushes, I drew 12 small trees and will proceed to paint each one with a different brush. Doing that will allow me to see if they can cover details as well as larger areas and how well they keep an edge or a point. All the brush tips did really well. In terms of performance, they compare to other decent synthetic brushes. The rest of it is much less impressive and would probably require you to tinker with them and possibly glue some parts together more securely. I can't really say for how long these brushes would last you, but as I used them, only one shed a hair. There's never any way to know for sure if a brush will break apart or last, but so far these look fine. So, are these any good? Well, I think they are. Especially for the price point. Are they mandatory? Nope. I think it relies more on personal choice here. If you prefer to save for a more expensive brush, or pay less for a bundle of less expensive ones. Price doesn't always directly relate to a brush's quality. I think it's more a matter of what we expect of it. When I pay less than a dollar per brush, I have incredibly low expectations, so it's much easier to appreciate the outcome. However, Nothing can quite beat the feeling of a brush you love 
on the paper. If these brushes provide this feeling for you, then this is definitely a winning deal. Do you have a favorite travel brush? Let me know in the comments below. Have a great day, bye bye!